Hey everybody, don't forget to check out my bookie, Sportsbook and Casino, America's most trusted sports book in 2019. You can look at betting lines and place bets in bare knuckle and MMA. Don't forget to use our referral code down below for a 50% sign up bonus. That's my bookie, Sportsbook and Casino. Let's talk about your fight you got coming up with uh, Chase Sherman, man. When did this? Uh, when did you know you were fighting Chase Sherman for the belt? Well, the thing is, is that I, I had had an idea that it was going to happen for a for a while now, and but then it was like, okay, there there was something Chase Sherman might have been doing like an MMA fight somewhere else, and and. David Feldman does this as solid as, as, you know, as prize fighters. Like, he'll let us go out and, and fight MMA. Um, so, there was an issue with that. And there was a couple weeks where I thought I was fighting Sam Schumacher instead. Actually, go way back. I forgot. Shit, go way back. And I was supposed to fight a gentleman by the name of Jimmy Jeanette, who, 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 uh, who beat Tony Lopez at BKFC 2. Mm-hmm. And then it turned into, okay, well, actually, no, we might want you to fight for the title. And then it became, oh, again, it's Sam Schumacher because Chase can't make it. But then, like, about two weeks ago, it got finalized. So, hmm. overall, I've known I've been fucking fighting, so I've been training my ass, so. Yeah. Well, congratulations on the title fight. Oh, That's yeah, up. man. I'm, I'm fucking pumped. I'm pumped. Good. Man, well, well, tell us, man, because I noticed, um, and I, I don't know if you changed anything, man, but your fight with uh, Jamie Campbell, I, I, I don't know what it was. There was something different about you, like good, in a good way. I mean, was there anything that you changed or anything that you know you changed? I, I, I don't know. I can't quite put my finger on it. Um, I, I know that uh, you were, God, correct me if I'm wrong, man, like you were talking to like a, like, mental not mental coach but like like yeah. a positive positive is that is that the right term mental coach okay yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. i I, yeah. I mean talk about it man like what what changes did you make before that fight i mean is that is that spot on like did you feel different going into that fight absolutely i felt i had rehearsed it i had written it out i had scripted the fight almost it was was fucking freaky like after after the fight like i was like oh fuck dude that was like almost to the to the fucking moment, to the actual finish. And I just, you know, visualization and just like, I've been fighting all over the world for 12 years, man. I never, never thought to do that. Never thought to get a, and, and the way it had happened was, was kind of, kind of by chance because I was going through some really hard, really rough times with, with my ex-wife we were towards the end of our relationship. And she's like, you need to go see, you need to talk to somebody, you're fucking, you're crazy, you're this, you're that. And I was like, all right. And coincidentally, like, the guy Caleb, uh, Caleb Rogers, is, is uh, his name on Instagram is the mental sensei. And he works with a, a few other, like, high-level guys in San Diego that I know of and I respect. So I was like, okay, like, I know, okay, I'm going to try this guy out. So I told my ex-wife, I was like, all right, I'm, I'm talking to this guy, blah, blah, blah. And, you know, shit actually ended up like going all the way down and spiraling out of control with my uh, my ex-wife and everything and he fucking like helped me process that helped me get through that without ever fucking even talking about the goddamn fight man mm -hmm. like just making sure that i could get through days of training like without killing somebody without flying yeah. off the handle right and, yeah that makes a big difference fuck yeah man <laughs> and then and then, like leading up to the fight, like as we got closer to the fight, and, and I was fully transitioned out of the, out of my old house, and uh, you know everything, like it just it kept everything like, okay, what's the game? What's our goal? What's our game plan? What can we control? Well, we can't control people, places, and, and we can't control people, places, and things, and outside influences. You know how all we can control is how we react to those situations. Like, and it's yeah. okay to be sad. It's okay to be upset. Okay, but but. There's no such thing as positive energy or negative energy. There's only energy. There's mm. only energy. So we got to funnel that energy into our sweet hitting our goal. So, yeah, man, this will be my third fight working with him. I'm on. I'm on fire. Like I'm. I'm ready to go get my title, man. You seem very energized. You seem very full of machismo right now. Like you're ready to go. Yeah, you know. I'm putting in work. I'm getting like ridiculous. I'm so blessed, man. High quality fucking 
pro level of sparring, boxing, sparring, like, um, you know, like a guy by the name of Michael Hunter who, who's fighting on the undercard of uh, Andy Ruiz and, and Anthony Joshua. I think he's like he's top ten heavyweight. He was an Olympian in fucking 2012. Another guy named Alex Garcia who's a, a six foot five heavyweight. You know, eighteen and one. His and uh, just crazy. Like, and I'm out there like just an MMA guy just doing my thing. <laughs> but you know, I I'm comfortable with who I am and, and like I know I'm not gonna fucking become a box like a refined boxer overnight. And I just go and I implement my game and, and like they're like, what the fuck? Like they're like I've never had we've never had sparring like you. Like you just keep coming. I was like, Yeah man, that's all I know how to do. Like Definitely. Head, Definitely. Yeah, that, moving, that's that MMA mentality. One hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, you know, so it's it's good, man. I'm really happy. I'm really happy, ready to go. Bro, I, I tell you what, man. Just hearing you talk about it, man. It's uh, uh, I, I, I feel, I feel the energy from you, brother. Like I, I feel the the positive. Well, if positive energy doesn't exist, but I, I tell you what, man. Like I, I just feel it, brother. Like uh, you seem like just seem more just something, man. And like you said, it's just you've been working with this guy. It's obviously working for you, man. Because like I, I can tell the difference. Because you know, we talked to you a bunch leading into BKFC four, you know, in Cancun, and we talked to you a few times and just kind of you know, chatting with you a few times there and, and after the fight and stuff like that, I've just noticed just such a huge difference just since then, man. So whatever you're doing, brother, like keep doing it, man. If it's working for you, do it, man. Cause that's, that's like you said, even more than the fight, man, just like day-to-day -day life. If it makes your life, your day-to-day -day life better, you can't, you can't ask for more than that, man. Yeah, absolutely. You know, and I'm, I'm in a good environment. I'm, I'm back. Um, and back coaching, you know, working in gyms, like what is what I love to do. And, yeah. and it also helps like, like process things. Like when I do something or I, I go over, uh, something that I learned in sparring from watching my film of sparring or, or hitting mitts with my coach and I'm like, Oh, I pick up on something that I'm all immediately going to class and like teach it to the kids, teach it yeah. to teach it to the people in the class. So it's like, I'm double learning it and really, really soaking it all in. So it's working yeah. good, man. What what did you think of uh, Chase Sherman's fight with uh, Arnold Adams? I think that Arnold Adams, like, I was watching it thinking, like, what the fuck are you doing? Like, you're going to lose. Like, I could see, like, the scorecards. Like, there's one for, like, and it wasn't like Chase was hurting him. Oh, he hurt him that last round. And I was like, he hurt him that last body shot. And I remember from my fight with Arnold, like, I landed a couple clean, hard shots to the body. And afterwards, he told me, he's like, dude, I, if you would have hit me again, I would have had to take a seat. And so I, when I saw Chase do it, I was like, God damn it. <laughs> like, and, uh, you know, but I was like, I don't know. I really think I really think if Arnold could get that one back, he, he, he has the skills to win. But, I mean, that was Chase's night. That was Chase's night. Yeah, I think Chase did a real good job at uh, recognizing that Arnold likes to set traps. He'll he'll let you feel comfortable, and he'll bait you into standing in front of him, and then he'll slip and rip, and he'll start countering you. Um, and Chase was never there. He'd get in, he'd hit him a few times, and he'd get back out. He'd get in, he'd hit him a few times, and he'd get back out. And he was never there for the counter. And Arnold just was, was, wasn't able to keep up at that point. You know, he gave away too many rounds, essentially. You know, yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a really good performance by Chase, definitely. Definitely a really yeah. good performance by Chase. I mean, like, Arnold would make a miss. He would make a miss, He was, and he was like, I'm like, all right, well, go fucking get him. Right, him. right, yeah. I remember yeah. watching, I was coming back. I was coming back from, from my MMA fight that I just did recently out in Russia. And I was in the fucking Moscow airport, like, yelling at my phone, like, what the fuck are you doing? <laughs> yeah. uh, yeah. Yo, yo you know what? If you don't mind, can you touch? Because didn't you, like, if I remember, like, reading something about that, like, wasn't it for, like, a Russian ambassador or some shit or, like, the Russian, some government? Okay, or so, no, man. It was supposed to be for, for Putin himself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it was, and so, like, we went through, we went to the metal detectors. They held our passports and everything. Like, the whole double extra security. And then, like, at the last second, they came into the locker rooms. They're like, well, Mr. Putin's not going to come. And I'm in the back, like... Good. All right. Fucking start the show, man. <laughs> I didn't come here to I didn't come here to visit Putin. I came to fucking fight and get my money. 
Right. And so, like, come to find out that there was, like, he didn't go because there was, like, some, like, uh, out of bounds, like, testing of, of nuclear missiles or something that was happening in, like, yeah, it was, like, some heavy uh-huh. shit. I'm like, they didn't fucking yeah. tell us. Yeah. <laughs> What what are your uh, not to look past Chase Sherman because I you know I I get that part but like what are your bare knuckle goals man let's just say you know you get this fight with Chase Sherman it goes your way like what what are your what are your goals man like are you in this like is this your to stick with bare knuckle for the long haul I mean I know this is like what your third fight fourth fight fifth right fight. fifth fight my bad fifth fight yes. like is, is this is this what you plan on doing I mean. You know, it, the thing is, it's like, you know, I, I, I'm a prize fighter. Yeah. You know, and, and right now, Bear Muckle is paying me the, the biggest prize. Yeah. And I can't imagine if uh, all, you know, God willing, I win that fight. You know, that's the last fight on my contract. They're going to show me some money and then fucking, hey, man, I'm, I'm going to ride with Bear Knuckle. I mean, for me, like, Training camps, it's easier, man. Like, fuck, dude, wrestling and jujitsu, that shit's hard. Especially, yeah. like, on my old body. Like, dude, I'll take a fucking bare knuckle punch in the face over fucking a two hour wrestling practice any day. You know, and that's just all respect to fucking wrestling. Like, wrestling fucking hurts. People want to think, oh, like, bare knuckle fighting hurts. Like, no, motherfucker, go do some fucking wrestling and jujitsu and they wake up the next day. And, like, that shit hurts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there's a big uh, difference yeah, so, between a 90 minute jujitsu workout and a 90 minute boxing workout. Yeah, big difference. You know, it's just it's just different. Like, <clears throat> so like the the thing is about like boxing. It's like for me, like what 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 hurts is like my elbows, my wrists, my shoulders. You know, and, but like my my quote unquote problem areas, like my injuries that actually weren't from competing, were from fucking high school football. Are my are my two blown out ACLs? Yeah. Uh, so I don't got to deal with that shit in bare knuckle right. boxing. Right. Yeah. I hear you, brother. Um, let's uh, well, get ready. Let me get your the final question on this is uh, your thoughts on Artem versus Jason Knight, number two, the rematch. Uh, you know, it is what it is. <laughs> I think I'm a little fucking. I'm a little salty that the heavyweight title is not the main event. I, you know what? I I agree with you a thousand percent because I I'm I'm kind of the old uh, call it the the pro wrestling mindset. The title should be at the end of the card. The title should always I I I, I like I get like the Pauly the Pauly Artem thing. Uh, I don't know, but the title is the most important thing. You need to make it the most important part of the card right. because I I feel like it, it feel, I feel like it kind of shits on the belt itself. It, it's that belt needs to be bigger than. You know, a, a non-title fight, one thousand percent. I'm, I'm right there with you, my friend. You know, like I will say this: it's like I don't know because I know from experience of having a crazy bloodbath fight, and then you show up to the second fight and you expect to do the same, and then the other person's not cooperating. Then you have a fucking uh, end up having a bullshit ass, boring ass draw, like me and Tony Lopez had our second one. I came to, I showed up in Mexico ready to fucking face hell, ready to walk through hell. And I remember in the, I remember in the, in he, credit to him, because he faked me out in the interviews leading up to it. He was, all he was saying is like, I have to finish him. I know I can't get a decision. Yeah. And I'm going to come for the finish. So I'm in my head, I'm like, fucking bring it, motherfucker. Let's do it. And it wasn't until the end of the second round, I was like, fuck, he's running. He's fucking running and trying to use his jab. Like, I was like, shit, I got to, I have to be, I have to fucking run after him. I have to go get him. And like, you know, we ended up with that lame ass uh, split draw, you know? But so, I don't know. We'll see if, if Artem or Jason Knight try to play smart and fucking take the win or if they fucking say, fuck it. And <laughs> we have bloodbath part two. That's very true. That's that's a good point, man. Because I, I I asked Jason about that, about the you know, everybody, and the, and the same goes with you and Tony. There was so much, there was so many expectations, and there were so many, you know, like you said, people were expecting that same bloodbath, and it's just a different fight, right? It was a different fight the second time. A lot of people were expecting that with Jason and Artem. I I don't know, man. I mean, it could be the same type of bloodbath dog fight, but 
Wasn't like that said. like third or the fourth time that you and uh you and Tony had fought each other? Yeah, fourth time. <laughs> fourth time, Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah, you guys fought MMA twice, and then yeah, that was your second uh, bare knuckle, brother. So, well, I tell you what, man, Joey, we appreciate your time, man, and uh, I I cannot fucking wait for you and Chase Sherman. I mean, I am pumped. It should be. It should headline the card. No offense to. Anybody else, no offense to Artem or Jason, but I think the title has to be the most important part of the card. That's my opinion. I agree with you a thousand percent, man. But uh, guys, uh, BKFC number nine, Biloxi, November 16th on pay-per-view and Fight TV. We appreciate your time so much, brother, and uh, we'll be in touch soon. Hell yeah, guys. Have a good one. Have a good one, brother.